I like that. You go in and say, Ameripro, I'll have my lender call you to introduce some of the best loan options and services for your next home. The convenience of having a lender relationship down the hall gives you an advantage and a connection you can count on. Love delivering the best possible services and great fees. Now, again, I'm putting these up here because this is a script. The meat of it is truth, though. Okay? Can a lender, trusted lender, give you the best loan options and services? The answer is absolutely. It's one of those things that you think you think they know, but they don't know. Don't ever assume they understand the value of this process. Then you go and rely on it. Hey, also one thing I'm going to do that other agents don't always do is from the very beginning, I'm going to have my title company, they're going to ask them to close it, rely on title. This will allow me to have more control over title issues that may arise by choosing reliant on the contract. It can save you and the seller's 50% off title fees. So, you know, this language is in here for a reason. So, you go through each one of Merifers. Prior to the purchase of your dream home, we're going to accomplish the goal. Prior to that purchase, I'll ask them to run a clue report. You get through all this by having this connection and affiliation with these key relationships. I'm able to provide my clients better communication and control of the process and return give you a very positive experience for the home buying process. So you can do the same thing on the seller side. Again, I'm going to leave this up here for time's sake. You, I'm going to provide all this language for you guys and you can learn it and make it yours. But hey, there are so many resources for selling a home today. There are a lot of resources. That's truth, right? Okay, you can do it yourself. Can they do it themselves? Absolutely they can do it themselves. Can they use a discount agent and other websites? Absolutely. Or they can use trusted consultants. Well, by the way, guess which one consistently achieves higher sales and better service uh, and less hassle? National Association of Realtors communicates that doing it with a trusted consultant will outperform all these others. And, you know, Marilyn, I know that this is one of the most valuable, most valuable things that people will put their trust into. So wouldn't you consider it the best to put it into a trusted resource, like a professional like myself? Yeah. I was curious, sometimes I would say, you know what, there's a lot of people I, I can do business with, but if I have brain surgery, and you know, I, I trust my mom, I'm not gonna trust my mom to do brain surgery on me. I, I wanna go to a trusted professional. Does that make sense? And sometimes just saying a little story like that connects this together, okay? So, again, I go through the same thing. I'm going to provide this for you guys. This is all seller-related, okay? Points about the seller. I'll have my lender review and qualify others to make sure the best loan options are presented. Lenders do that? Absolutely. Go to a new build. You know what they do? you got to qualify with my lender. Right? Why not put that into your value? Uh, Reliant Title, I'll start by asking the buyers to close a Reliant Title. Uh, Ameripers, prior to listing them, I'll ask them to run a clue report just to make sure there's no any claims on this property that surprise us as we get into it. And oh, by the way, hey, I'm going to have them reach out to you to do a seller home warranty because if something happens while we're under contract, having a seller home warranty could protect you during this time while you're under the contract. Would that be okay? So, I mean, these are things, again, you've got to be comfortable with this. I'm just saying, these are ways you can use what we're a part of as a whole to add value. Come to the same conclusion. Second way is to educate. Hey, here's a great way. TRID has just happened right now, right? What a great way. I think the acronym for TRID is the reason why I drink, or the reason why I drink, something like that, TRID. But here's the thing. Uh, October 3rd, New Consumer Laws created the biggest biggest changes in the industry in the last 20 years. TRID. What does TRID stand for? Truth and Lending, Respa, Integrated Disclosure Forms. Why? Why do we have this? Basically, they wanted us to know before you owe as a consumer. So here's what's going on. Um, I share the success team calendar at that point. And I go through that calendar and I say, hey, as you can see, there's some important due dates and requirements that are part of the closing process. Once we write the contract, these critical dates have to be met, or it can delay closing. My role is to make this, make sure this is, uh, process runs smoothly. 
And this is accomplished by working together with both lender and the title company to provide timely documents. Share about what happens if, if we delay one week. Is there, is there, is there a problems if you delay closing for a seller? Heck yeah, they may be moving. They may have the moving truck coming the day of closing, and because they did not get the trusted advice from the very beginning and prepare them for these delays, their moving truck's gone and they're out of here. And all of a sudden they're gonna have a week delay in closing. You know how frustrating and scary that can be? That's not gonna happen with me. Because, because let me show you why. I'm gonna be on top of it. See this transaction calendar right here? I want you to be aware of what's happening in the industry because I'm gonna be watching this. So I'm gonna educate them a little bit and say, look, when we go on a contract, we're trying to close in 30, 33 days. As you can see here, the blue represents many of the lending, lending required dates, critical dates. Red are some title company requirements. <clears throat> the black are some things that I'll be doing a long way. Every step along the way, I'm going to be tracking that, following up with the lender, checking on the title company. But I want you to have this. You can take this home and use it uh, because I'm going to show you what's important. There's some critical dates that I'm going to keep on track to make sure that your equity is protected, to make sure you have a great experience, to make sure your your uh, deposit or your earnest money is protected along the way, and we close on time. So it's a great visual. You can point to it, summarize it just like that, give it to them in their hands. You can find this, uh, we have our document stored to plrre.com. You can find it there. I don't have any extras today, but we've been handing some out. So that right there, that's kind of the backdrop. Is value important? Yeah, I mean, it's, it, that, that's what you want. That's why you're here. So, Chuma's going to come up, and I said, Chuma, just share your stories. Just share your experiences and, and, and talk about what you're doing, you know, how you, you know, really how you're being successful using maybe this calendar, some stories that you have. And then, um, and then I asked her to, to just kind of share about why she's so passionate about the value of our company. So, Chuma, come on over here. Well, I guess everyone in here has a listing presentation of some sort, right? Something? Paper? Paper? <laughs> <laughs> well, did everyone come to the meeting, the agent meeting, last month where Chase presented the calendar that he just showed? Okay. Have any of you used it with your clients yet or prospective clients? You have used it. Buyers? Sellers? Buyer? 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 What, what was the feedback? Were they kind of glazed over, or did it really intrigue them enough to get into a conversation with you? They were intrigued, because they know it's new, and they know it's new. So they knew, yeah. or did you tell them it was no, something no. new? They knew, they knew already, they would asked about it. Okay. Well, I was scared to death of Trent um, coming, and I kept thinking, I'm just not going to mention it to my clients. I'm just going to take care of the process behind the scenes. They're never going to be any wiser. I'm going to make sure things happen. At the same time, I've been thinking about that while Trid was kind of barking in my ear. I've been using the same listing presentation now for, I guess, about two years. And it was birthing a baby when I, when I finally got to it. Still not 100%, but when I ran into Chase and he asked me to look at this calendar with some ideas and brainstorming of giving us a new resource, I thought, okay, here it is. Here's something else that I can add to my listing presentation as well as present it to my clients as a way to build trust um, and not really hide from it. So it gave me a resource that I walked out and I was really, really excited about it, but I didn't really know how to pitch it and didn't have too much time to study on it because I think we met on a Friday and I had two appointments listed or uh, scheduled for that Saturday brand new clients. They were not repeat, so I did not know them. One was a buyer, never bought a home before, and one was a very educated seller, had bought and sold several homes, but I didn't know either one of them. So I was really excited to use it on both of them because I thought that's both ends of the spectrum um, that I'm going to get to use this on and really see if it works or not, and if I'm comfortable presenting it or not. Um, so, you know, my, my first meeting was with the uh, very educated home seller. And I typically go through the same thing in my listing presentations when I arrive and we go through the home and we're talking and I'm trying to kind of build a little bit of a relationship before we sit down and I start going through my listing presentation and give them the information they need to, to be able to make a decision. 
So I get there and I took, I'm going through the house with them and I feel this home seller, the husband, not really connecting with me at all. Um, I'm giving my tips on, you know, moving this piece of furniture out and make sure that ceiling fan gets repaired and, you know, trying to have these meaningful conversations before, again, we sit down at the table. And he's, he's kind of blowing me off. Every statement I make, we're not engaging. And I thought, well, this is just going to be a waste of time, so I'm going to bring this trick out throughout anyway because I'm probably not going to get this. Um, <coughs> wife was pretty reserved. I had nothing. There's nothing there for me. So we sit down at the table finally and I, I pull everything out like I typically do and we start talking and I, I get out my, my presentation, open it up and I go through what I typically go through. I'm a great agent, I've been in the business, <laughs> all the things we typically say, right? Um, I'm on every website, your listing's going to have beautiful photos on every website, everything that every other agent says. And I say that. You know, all of us are going to do this. And by the way, he told me that he was going to interview four or five agents. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So I, at the very end, I pull out the trade calendar. I don't even know what I'm going to say. I haven't even had a chance to really think about what I'm going to say. The, the ink was still wet. Yeah, it was. I mean, it wasn't even in its final version. <laughs> yes. I looked at it. Oh, wow. So, uh, so I pull it out and I talk about this, you know, trade calendar. Or I'm pulling it out, and, and before that, he says this. By the way, I already have a cash offer from a buyer's agent. I realized right then that that's why he's blowing me off the entire time. Doesn't really matter what I say or if he's going to choose to, to you know, put his house in the market. He already has a cash offer. Why do anything? So, with me. So, I pull out this trade calendar, and I start talking about this process of how it's changed our real estate industry for the buyer and for the seller. Even though he's the seller, it's going to affect him. And I talk about that close date on that 33rd day on our calendar here. And I said, you know, if you have a buyer that is a lender or even cash, like you have one now, there are things that have to happen in a timely manner or you can't close on this close date. And it sounds real simple right now, but it's not gonna be simple two or three or four days before closing when your moving truck is coming and you need cash in your bank account to